For the longest time, I haven't been able to figure out how exactly I'm going to manage projects. Um, Obsidian is used for a lot of things, and I've been struggling over the last while is how do I fit project management into Obsidian? And I think I found, I finally found a, a pretty decent way to manage that with a project note. So in the Smart Notes, uh, How to Take Smart Notes book, there are four types of notes. There's the fleeting note, the literature note, the permanent note, and a project note. And what I'm realizing is that the fleeting note can be interchangeable between being just kind of a generic fleeting note or a fleeting note attached to a project. Um, but also the different literature notes, a fleeting note can turn into all the other types of notes. It can turn into a literature note. It might just be a fleeting note to remember to read a book or to watch a course, uh, but it also might just become a permanent note. And so it's very confusing in the very beginning when that type of note, you think there's just this uh, linear progression between the three or four and they're not. And what I want to show you today is how I've come up with project notes in Obsidian. So if we go into the projects folder here for me, I have a number of projects and I don't think this is optimal quite yet, but I'm fairly happy with it. So I have kind of two different types of project notes. I have a manuscript type note for a big body of work, like a book and a video course. And then I have kind of like a long running project like running a newsletter or a blog or a project at work. Now, the whole point of a project note is whenever that effort is done, you can move it into an archive entirely, all the notes associated with it. And that gets a little bit tricky when you're dealing with something like Obsidian because notes are also the folders. They're how you, they're the entry points into the different knowledge. And so you need kind of like the project notes themselves that will be kind of together like for me, for example, the knowledge worker, I have a note for ideas for newsletters that might contain multiple permanent notes, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, but then there's also this need to have this top level entry point into the knowledge worker. And so if we open that, you'll see that I have here, you know, I have this little uh, informational quote in the beginning, I want to build uh, and grow an audience of engaged readers. But then I have here my ideas. So these are all the fleeting notes. And one thing that's always driven me nuts with anything that I've used in the past is these fleeting notes accumulate everywhere and they're all combined. So all the ideas and stuff that I have for the knowledge worker are mixed with my work or they're mixed with other uh, efforts such as different books and stuff and ideas that I have, or maybe ideas that I've had that I don't even know where they go yet, and they're all mixed into one big list, and it overwhelms me to the point that I typically throw it in the trash. Uh, now I have the idea, the ability to take a fleeting note in my day planner and then tag it with project, the knowledge worker, and now I have this nice dynamic, uh, dynamically curated list of fleeting notes specifically pertaining to the knowledge worker. So in here, um, you know, some ideas for a video course might be, or for a video might be how I manage research, um, syncing Obsidian with GitHub, project notes in Obsidian, which is this video right here, um, et cetera. So now I'll go down to this. Now this is a project note, but it's also the entry point into all these other things. So I have this heading of newsletters and then I have notes in here of the different newsletter ideas that I have in my head right now. So I have one for usage agreements and attention capacity. And if we open these, or if we look inside, we don't have to open it. Um, you can see that I have permanent notes linked in here. So the whole point of the knowledge base and the slip box is these notes start to build up towards um, different artifacts. And typically those, at least in the book, are talked about articles and essays in more long form content, but there's no reason that it couldn't be shorter form content like a newsletter. And so here I have four permanent notes ready so that I can take this outline that I've created and open up my Ulysses editor on the other side and review these notes and write the newsletter. So I've already you know hit the ground running. So if I even hover over this, I can see inside the note for that. Here's the note on attention capacity that I wrote. And so it's basically a writing prompt at that point that builds up this research um, for the different articles. Now, if you look at Learn to Write Fast as an essay that I have on my mind, uh, because I have gone from the ability to write 100 words per hour to 1,500 words if I have all my permanent notes lined up, because I've already done the bulk of the writing, and that's the whole point of the system. Um, and so in here, I definitely have, you know, different kinds of attention was actually a permanent note linked in the newsletter, 
And you can see, now I know this one permanent note now is linked to two artifacts that I'll produce. And most likely will be produced or be used in a third, such as a manuscript for a book. Um, and then I have another output of tutorials. So I basically have a list for each of my outputs. Now, there is this idea, um, if you go to takenotes.com and you go to tools, he says that there's the slip box and there's the editor. So there is this clear dividing line when you've accumulated enough permanent notes in a project or some kind of body of work that you need to cut from your slip box into your editor. And my editor is Ulysses. So once I have enough smart notes to make up a body of work, such as a newsletter or an essay, it's at that point that I create that artifact in Ulysses as a rough draft. And that's kind of the cutoff point in my workflow. And I've just kind of agreed that I'll use a, a green check mark to indicate that. And then down here are just, you know, kind of, they're somewhat fleeting notes, but they're features that I want to add that I don't know wh when I'll get to, you know, like enabling a paid sub subscription or using a, a share this within the newsletter. Um, and then another cool thing, I, it just kind of lifts you up is I've uh, started to include some praise that people have given me inside of the comments on the knowledge worker. So that's what it looks like from, you know, kind of running that particular project. Now, what it looks like in for in uh, manuscript form in the different type of project note that I've started to accumulate is in a, is in a manuscript. Um, and in the manuscript, there's kind of like two things I'm worried about. One is the actual outline and the permanent notes that make up that outline, but also always staying ahead of my research. So how I do that is I use these fleeting notes to populate either ideas for the book or I'll know through my own, you know, uh, writing of the chapter and uh, self-discovery of writing, of reading different books for research for this, I inevitably stumble upon more research. And I use tags in here and I tag them um, collection, reclaim, and then the chapter of the section I'm working on. So then I have uh, an easy way to look at the research. So if we expand some, some of the chapters that I've done notes for, because I started writing this book before I started doing smart notes. So side effects of usage is a good one. And if we come down to habit is 10 nature is a section that I just finished, which was over 2000 words. Um, but it was based on these four permanent notes that I took. Um, and there's three different books in here that I read to get these notes. And that happened over time. Um, so habit is 10 nature is actually note. I thought it was a great title for the chapter or the section. Um, and then some other notes that I've taken, like the jiggler's brain is from a book called the shallows by Nicholas Carr, how the internet is affecting our brain. Um, and I also just include some quotes that I might want to put in here. Now, again, this is all um, building it up. So I'm not going to wait until I have the entire book outlined in here. I wait until I have enough notes to do a section. And then I move that section into my editor and I start to write because I want to keep my knowledge cycle as small as possible. So those are kind of the two types of project notes. I have, you know, the, the kind of project project that you would think uh, this would probably fit pretty well in something like notion, but I want to keep everything in one tool. I want to keep my productivity planner in here. I want to keep my Zettelcast in, in here. And I also want to keep my project management in here because it's yielding tremendous results. As I can see, it goes across my different, uh, interests. Um, I even have a project note for uh, a new content area that I'm going to be doing at work. And so I, you can see I'm starting to build this out. I have the articles that I'm writing. I have little notes to myself and I have the references. Now, where do all these links go? Like these are actually links outside. But if you go back to uh, the knowledge worker, these are actually notes inside smart notes or inside Obsidian, sorry, inside my vault somewhere. And what I've decided to do is create a folder for each project and put them in here. Just for whatever reason, my OCD, I could not just name them, you know, like 000, go on Azure and let that surface to the top. I needed to push them in uh, some kind of folder to keep some neat structure. Uh, but the other benefit of that is, is if I ever decide to, you know, reclaim finishes up or I decide to pack up the knowledge worker as a newsletter, I can take all those notes easily. They're all in one place. I just move in the, the entry point note here 
into that folder and I can put it into an, to an archive or I can even take it out and put it somewhere, maybe on a zip drive or something like that if I don't want it in my knowledge base anymore. Um, so that's kind of it. A lot of information, I'm sure. But that's it for the project notes. Again, the two types, manuscript and project management. I hope you found this was useful. Please let me know if you have any questions or um, whatnot in the comments. Thank you for watching.